It's vast and mostly empty. Nothing can survive there, and only a few have ever gone willingly. No, it's not Salt Lake City. It's space. But with tech billionaires already planning a life amongst the stars, will humanity get left behind like a high school boyfriend after graduation? Find out tonight. Where did space come from? According to God, the universe began around 7,000 years ago, but some scientists claim otherwise. Now, corporations have their eye on the sky as the next center for business. But, like a new stepmom, can we trust something so cold and unforgiving? We wanted to hear from average people if they would prefer a life amongst the stars. So we took our new space-themed news van out to the streets and invited anyone to come inside to tell us what they think. So, excuse me, sir. Would you like to talk about deep space on our Big Bang bus? Sir. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Would you like to get on the Big Bang bus? You wanna, would your child like to be on the Big Bang bus? People were a little camera shy at first, but once we offered a little incentive, they couldn't wait to talk about space. So what excites you most about being an astronaut? You know, I've been a pizza man, a cable repair man, a, a teacher giving out extra credit. So astronaut is, is a perfect opportunity for me. But you're not afraid of being sucked out. No, it's the best part. So how do you feel about deep space? I mean, I love it deep. The deeper, the better. <laughs> I know getting there can be difficult, and it seems like rockets just keep getting bigger and bigger every year. Well, if your rocket's big enough, it really shouldn't be an issue getting there at all. How do you feel about being strapped in? You know, bring on the straps, chains, leather, rope, it's all good. So what scares you most about this endeavor? Losing thrust. Re-entry. Anal prolapse. And aliens. Well, there you have it. Average citizens seem to be bursting to go into outer space. It looks like people will just keep coming and coming. Space. Is it actually dangerous for civilians? With me to debate the morality of sending his employees into space is mining company CEO, Mr. Lloyd Clement, and arguing against him is NASA scientist, Dr. Tracy Brighton. Look, I think there is a world of resources up there, and I've got a ragtag crew of miners ready to sail out there and drill into an asteroid. I mean, what could go wrong? Are you describing the plot to Armageddon? Maybe, but I think we could all learn a thing or two from that documentary. Science fiction. Why don't you give me one good reason why I shouldn't send my men up there? Well, aside from the tens of billions of dollars, I think he would probably be sending the viability of commercial space flight back decades. Well, he did ask for only one reason. That's true. Hey, by the way, Bernie, do you have any coffee around here? I'm just getting a little bored listening to this guy yammer on about science, and I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep. No, you don't want to miss a thing. Okay, now you're just saying the lyrics from the Aerosmith song that was from the movie. I don't know what you're talking about, Dr. Brighton. Let's go ahead and pretend that this is somehow viable. Why would you take miners and, and, and train them to be astronauts when you could just take astronauts and, and train them to mine? Doesn't make any sense. You're right, it doesn't make sense. It makes dollars, friend, and we gotta hurry up, because up there right now, already competition. Everyone knows on the dark side of the moon, they got robots up there, can transform into all kind of different vehicles. One of them can even transform into a truck. They've already got distribution figured out. That's a plot to the movie, Transformers. You're talking about Optimus Prime. I'm talking about Prime, all right, Prime Real Estate. We need to get our moon base up there right now before there's Decepticon eat our lunch. Okay. You, you know what could happen? Aliens. What? Wait, of course, man. Half my crew's Mexican. What are you talking about? Space well. Maybe the whole asteroid is, is constructed of, of nothing but alien eggs. Then then what? Now, Dr. Brighton, when you say alien egg, do you mean like the, the, the face? Yes. Ones? That's right. The, hmm. I do not like that one bit. Mr. Clement, has your firm done any research <gasps> into alien eggs and their effect on one's face? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I got to give that to you. Those things took out a whole platoon of Marines. Yeah. Well, due to overwhelming concerns about face-sucking alien eggs, I have to declare Dr. Brighton the winner this evening. Graceful. And now, a word from our sponsor. Do you want to serve your country? Be all you can be, but not actually fight. And no, we're not talking about the Coast Guard. Join the Space Force. You'll be part of an elite group known as the Space Cadets. The soldiers who guard our satellites from enemy dirt and debris, guard the flags on the moon from strong winds, and fight off a force so dangerous, we don't even know what it is yet. As a space cadet, you'll be outfitted with advanced technology, like the space cadet uniform and the space cadet laser pointer. And you'll get the training you need to be in the best shape of your life. Drop down and give me 20 space push-ups, you space maggot! In space. So are you ready to earn money for a degree from the most prestigious community college in Detroit? Sign up now, Space Force. 
an army of none. <laughs> <laughs> Since we'll all undoubtedly be living in a colony on Mars soon, we brought in lifestyle expert Rowena Fowler, who's gonna give us some tips on how to cope with life in the cold, dark abyss of space. Well, thank you for having me. You know, when you're sick and tired of listening to the humming of those engines, we actually have a noise generator to recreate that feeling that you're back at home. Okay. So this is NeighborBot. Oh, yeah. To recreate oh, oh, that oh, sound. Yeah, it's like your neighbors are having sex, but they're muffled through the wall. There's also the pet with separation anxiety. Oh, oh yeah. It's that dog that you just wish you could put some antifreeze in its dog food so it would be quiet let you sleep. It. What? I haven't done it, I haven't done it. <laughs> and it also has a domestic argument. Mm. Heartbreaking and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of being a child at home and trying to go to bed, but hearing mom and dad. And yeah. Yes, yeah. same. Oh, ooh, it's escalating. I Someone know. Someone better call the cops. Oh, 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 I don't oh. want to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's amazing how depressed we're going to be in space, just like here on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> As global warming turns Earth into a smoldering crater, we look forward to adopting space as our new home. Yes, nothing left for us here but rising tides and global devastation on a biblical scale. Let's take a look back on all the good times and great achievements of planet Earth. Thanks for everything, planet Earth, and good night. Thanks for watching Get Fact. Please hit the like button and subscribe and watch more videos down below. And if you know someone who needs to join the Space Force, hit the share button and share this video with them. We need everyone.